So our next speaker is going to be Robert Zaremba coming to us from Switzerland. He's going to be talking about redefining online trust with soul bound tokens. And as always, fun fact about Robert, he owns six racing bikes and he said he only thinks about work when he's riding them sometimes. So please welcome Robert Zaremba. Uh, hello everyone. So I'm going to talk about uh, humanity, about souls, and about how we can construct, how we can create new foundations for creating new social constructs. So let's go. Um, so I already got a little bit of intro, but from a technical perspective, I um, I'm an architect at the NDC Tech Work Group. I'm part of the Contract Standards Work Group. Um, yeah, created a few uh, major standards like the fungible token standard, recently the uh, SBT standard, and also working on the multiple, fun uh, multiple token, multi fungible token standard. I'm also a researcher and developer at Cosmos, lecturing at uh, University of Geneva, and yeah, my interest is in general social economical protocols. So, guys, I guess uh, you know it, uh, and it's boring, right? <laughs> it looks bored. <laughs> Uh, but uh, a lot of people care about it, uh, for better or worse, uh, makes a lot of money. And if you miss it, then uh, you may look like the woman on the left. If you didn't miss it, you feel like a boss. Um, and uh, those were about NFTs. And uh, many people can think that uh, the soul bond token can be represented as an, uh, as an NFT. And this is what I want to talk about. So uh, an SBT is a token, is non-fungible, is non-transferable, but uh, about the but I will talk later, and there is a bound. So um, as like a uh, picture, if you want to draw it, you can think about it that um, those tokens can represent something. So let's say if you worked, uh, a reward, um, a fact of your life, something that is really bound to you and describes you. So um, NFT, if you can, in, in my definition, if I think about NFT, I think about a subject. So NFT can be a car. NFT can be a, an image. NFT can be a bottle of a wine. Um, SBT, on the other hand, hand, will define a subject. So it can be a certificate about me. Um, it can be um, my identity. Um, uh, a reputation. It can represent a, a social right for governance or a membership. And um, from like this abstract perspective, yes, you can think that uh, they don't compete between each other. Yes? So SBT can describe NFT. If you think that NFT is a subject and um, SBTs define the subject, then uh, we can link them together. Uh, works? Not does work? Okay. Um, and in here, we like to innovate. Uh, okay, correct. Uh, we innovated with the fungible tokens. Uh, we, uh, we did again with events, uh, meta transactions, so the account model uh, and the uh, delegation actions. Those are very interesting things. So um, definitely, like the concept of SBT come from the Ethereum, but uh, it doesn't mean that we need to copy it, and uh, we didn't. Um, we did better. So uh, if you want to have your ide digital identity and you want to think about it, that uh, it will be this non-transferable. But if you think about it from the NFT category, yes, then uh, you may look like this. Um, soul, right? So uh, you have a human, you have uh, a subject, and a soul, yes, which will describe it. Uh, People, for example, yes, like in the mountain will tell you, yes, tell me what did you climb in the winter, I will tell you how good are you. Um, so tell me what, what did you do, tell me uh, what are your certificates. This is how it describes you. Um, uh, so can you transfer it? Can you transfer your abilities? Well, not really. Uh, can, you, can you put the abilities to something which doesn't have a soul? Um, again, right, it's like depending how do we, how do we model it. So uh, our model here is like really different. Um, we um, will go talk about it later. Uh, we really define a soul as a set of abilities. 
So talking about the non-transferability, um, transferability, in fact, is very important. Um, like if you come from the, let's say, original Ethereum idea about like the uh, account model and the near account model, yes, we have a clear separation between um, authorization level or authentication level and, and an address and an identity. Yeah, so um, as an identity, I should be able to have many authentication um, ways. Uh, I, I should plug authentication. Same thing is for the transferability for the soul, right? If the soul, I mean, if in a blockchain we think about an account that can uh, represent me, right? And it will build up that soul. I should be able to somehow merge, migrate, or recover the soul if, if the account itself requires uh, to be merged, recovered, or, or renewed for whatever reason, yes? For example, because it was compromised, uh, your key is lost, and, and so on. If you lose your passport, yes, it doesn't, know that, doesn't mean that your, your identity is lost. You are still there. So uh, building up this protocol, we need to think about this, um, these problems, and we need to solve them. And on the other hand, um, there are problems that uh, can be, I mean, can kick us back um, and uh, be used by an attacker. So there is a, a whole vector of a civil attacks when this transferability could be used against the principal. So we don't want that the, the this abilities will be traded. Yeah, so let's say if you have your character in a game, that you don't want that ability of a character will be traded to another character or duplicated. Um, so in uh, Efland, yes, there was there is this whole uh, ERC, you know, some model about um, I forgot the name, but you have an NFT and the NFT can host other NFTs. Um, I think a better way to model it would be again with this SBTs here. But we need to have economic model to prevent different actions and at the same time have the recoverability and the no transferability. So um, we cannot duplicate, we cannot overwrite. Um, body without the soul is dead. So once you transfer something, the account the source account is blocked. Um, so this is the, the economics model we, um, we built uh, in the uh, SBT standard. Uh, so whenever you, you move the soul to another account, yes, the, the source account will be blacklisted, blocked forever. Um, uh, when the source account and a destination account already has an SBT and there is a conflict between them, then you cannot do a transfer. Um, so um, you cannot overwrite, of course, because um, the protocol doesn't understand which one is the more accurate one. Uh, however, uh, every person can burn any of his SBTs. Um, uh, there is also like economical motivation why someone should burn his SBT. Well, if you don't want it for whatever reason, uh, even there, I mean, the trace on the blockchain will be there, of course, but um, you have a right, yes, how you, how you want to, let's say, get rid of maybe some abilities. Um, so those uh, economical uh, requirements draw us to these design choices. So it with, when you think again with NFT, you have like each NFT will be a contract and each that contract will have its own balance book. Um, this doesn't work with the requirements we have now because um, of the transferability. So you want to be like really atomic. I didn't mention it before, but the, the, the clear solution here is that when you transfer a soul, you, you, you need to transfer it completely. You cannot like say, like they take a part of, of soul from account and then transfer it to account A and another part to account B. That's not how it should work. Um, so all the operations must be atomic. And in the world like we have in the blockchain, when there is a block limit, transaction limit, and when you have many abilities, this can go out of the way. So um, we, we had to do some more um, uh, critical decisions in how, how this works. So we separated the balance book. There is only one balance book for our SBTs. And this is what we call a registry. Registry is more like a public good. So uh, today, the I am human registry is still permissioned, meaning that if you want to issue tokens um, in the IAM human registry, you, uh, you have to be whitelisted. This is not what we want. 
um, in general, but we still keep it so far so we have more abilities to um, adapt quicker uh, without creating a break, I mean, um, breaks with other protocols we, we don't know. So at least we know if, if you want to, let's say, break an API, uh, change something, we, have a, we, we know with who we want to talk and get the feedback. Um, so uh, that call, that decision worked. We got few breaking changes uh, for a better. Um, that also draw like a new extensions. I will talk about them soon. So yeah, so, so the principle is that you have contracts which will represent the SBT, but the, the, the tokens will be recorded in that common registry. Um, and then you have a user, and then a user can talk about the, the issuer, the metadata about the issuer in the class um, directly to the, to the issuer contracts to the SBT. But if they want to talk about uh, query tokens, then they, then they query registry. So the, the flow is rather simple here. Like once you understand that there is this difference between issuer, issuer contract, and the registry, uh, then uh, if uh, Alice wants to get the token, uh, she may request it from issuer. So think about it, that this is a, a, a DAO or, um, or a Congress or someone from a class, from, um, from a group. Uh, so that issuer will mint a token by um, uh, calling the, the, the issuer contract. The issuer contract will do a call to the registry requesting the, uh, the balance book update registry emits the event so indexers can pop up and the information is, I mean, we assure the integrity of the information between the whole ecosystems and tools. Uh, the registry will return the, uh, the token ID and that token ID is returned back to Alice. Um, classes, so uh, normally you can think that um, you have a token and then you have a, a token ID and that's it, right? Um, why classes? So one issuer may have um, different categories, different kinds of the tokens they want to, they want to create. So let's say an issuer is your university. A class can represent a year and a, and a diploma, right? So let's say if you're a major, major in computer science, um, graduating 2010, that will be class one. Graduating 2011, class two. Uh, if you are a major in, uh, in history, yes, there will be another class. So you don't need to create a new issuer for every um, uh, category of SBTs. Uh, it's often better to do it with classes. Um, and our use case, for example, with Fractal is that we have one issuer Fractal and there is a, a class for a face verification, there is a class for KYC verification, there could be a class for um, other verifications. Um, okay, so I mentioned about few extensions. So um, I, I hope now the concept of SBT and registry works now, but I am human is special because it's really targeted to uh, provide more description related to proof of humanity, proof of personhood. So for example, uh, you want to mint your token to an account, let's say a membership account. Uh, the token will represent a membership in a group. And you only want to mint to an account which is already validated as a human. And if you want to do it automatically, we provide a function to that. Yeah, so you don't need to do a check between an indexer or, or, or with a registry. There is a shortcut to do it. Of course, burn, like I mentioned. Uh, burn all, so a user can burn all of his tokens if he wants. Uh, is human call. Um, so um, if you remember uh, in the fungible tokens, yes, we have um, transfer call. So this is something similar. Uh, if I am a human, if I'm calling the contract as a human, the, the contract will authorize me and let um, the, the downstream contract know that it's called by a human, by me, right? So um, it's, it's, again, it's kind of a shortcut. So um, you want to, it's very useful for all the protocols, like, uh, for example, easy pool pooling, that you want to assure that a transaction is originated by a human. Uh, is human call lock? It's a new extension we added two weeks ago. It allows you to uh, lock for transferability. So, um, 
And the perfect example is voting body and the governance. Um, when, you, um, when you vote, if there is a period of time you want to vote, let's say a week, and a common attack vector would be that, okay, I vote with one account, and then I do a soul transfer, so I move my soul to another account, and now there is a new account, and I want to vote with that new account. Um, the original idea how we wanted to prevent that was recording the proof of humanity, so the, soul, the, the tokens, right? The soul tokens, which represents the humanity. Um, that created a lot of opacity, a lot of um, implementation details that was going to the, um, to the user, to the, I mean, to the developer, to the user of the protocol, which was not necessary and buggy prone. So that's why we, increment, uh, we created that lock. It's a user who is like uh, locking, agreeing to lock his account, uh, lock his soul in the account to do an action which, which has a span in a time. So um, a governance is the perfect example. And there is this lock duration, so let's say a protocol who is requesting that should set the lock duration, like the, the minimum that is necessary is to prevent double vote, double spend, and so on. So let's say if we are in the voting, the voting is seven days, but we are already in the fifth day of voting, then the lock duration should be set at five days. If there is already an existing lock longer than the one we request, then we always take the maximum. So we, we don't overwrite, we, we always take the maximum. So if there is another protocol which depends on the lock, um, uh, there won't be an issue or a, or, or a collision between the data they want to um, and, uh, acquire. And queries, so you can check if an account is a human. Uh, flagging. Uh, flagging is, I would say, uh, a feature that, um, yes, many people may dab about. Um, so against extension, it's not part of the core protocol. And we are still like thinking how, what will be the next version, how we, we, we want to evolve with this design, but it's meant for a governance. So for example, um, uh, the council of I am human can flag some other account that let's say it violated um, some um, a policies. Yes, and uh, let's say prevent him from participating in elections, in certain elections. Um, so in voting body, we released voting body for NDC a week ago, uh, at the beginning of this week. Yes, there is a gov ban. The gov ban only bans a user uh, or ask the ban to the user to not be able to uh, participate in elections. He can vote, he can execute his human rights, but he cannot be an active participant uh, or in, of the execution body. Of course, this is up to the, the protocol, I mean the, the users, to see if they want to use it or not. Right, so if the uh, NDC v2 decides, okay, we don't, we don't want to care about those flags, it's their choice. The flags are there, the commission yes, to uh, manage those flags can, um, can, be, uh, can be managed, in fact, by, by, by the voting body itself. Uh, but I, I think it's a tool that uh, other protocols can build on. I'm a little bit out of time. I want to quickly talk about the digital society. Um, so like the digital society, or uh, DICE, it's like the richer movement for pluralistic ecosystem. Right? So there is like no one environment. Uh, like today you think that there is an environment um, by your neighborhood, country, culture. Right? With digital society, you have circles. The, those, like, you can be in many, many different circles. It's like in a little bit like in real life. Yes, you have your, uh, your work uh, circle, you have your, let's say, family circle, hobby, and so on. Um, those can determine um, different social levels, different social interactions, different abilities you may want to do. And representing it with the soul band tokens is, is really a good idea um, because our society is really not about uh, uh, the digital life, but, but the real life. And uh, how we can link it together, how we can assure that the, there are protocols basically to provide all these different features, I think it's very important. So there is this uh, idea called so sociocracy. You can think about it as a democracy uh, 3.0. Uh, basically, the, the, the main issue with the, the democracy is that um, it's not very efficient, right? Because it's large. Um, if you want to make a decision in a big group of people, uh, good luck. Uh, it's already very hard to do a referendum. Uh, 
And uh, on the other hand, like if you have hierarchical, um, oh, I'm super hard, sorry, <laughs> I'm finishing. <laughs> so if you have like a hierarchical decision making, the hierarchical uh, governance system, yes, then many people will disagree with that, right? Because it's top down rather than uh, um, egalitarian. So sociocracy is like this, again, circles idea that uh, we have consensus and we go beyond the consensus with uh, unity, uh, discussions, organizations, double linking, so the circles are not disconnected. There is always a linkage to common people who are between the circles uh, to assure that there is uh, quality flow, information flow, and so on. Uh, okay, so uh, that's the last. And uh, yeah, I think we can make a photo of it and then look at it later. But the idea is really that uh, we want to assure uh, efficient flows between decision making, people, and, uh, uh, and also social movements. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs>